hello everyone welcome back welcome back welcome back so um today i'm just going to demonstrate quickly how to extend your stay in canada okay we all know that uh, the canadian government allow you to extend your stay in canada should you want to stay beyond six months now we all also know that um for any temporary visa you cannot stay beyond six months at a stretch in that particular country however for canada this is a good one because they allow you to stay beyond six months but you have to put in for an extension of stay irrespective of the number of years that is still valid on your visa so uh you might have a 10 years visa but that does not mean you can stay for 10 years your maximum stay is six months but should you want to stay beyond six months now this is where you file in for your extension of stay so it's a quick process <laughs> so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate how to put in for your extension of stay this can be done by a visitor in canada someone that also lives in canada and wants their loved one to stay beyond six months maybe they still need more support from this loved one for those of us doing for our parents our siblings or whoever this is just the process so let's get started but hold on do not forget to share to subscribe <laughs> And hit the notification button so you can get my update whenever I post any videos. So thank you. Let's get into this. And the first thing, just come on your Google and search uh, extend. Just stay in Canada. I've done this multiple times. So some of these things we just uh, auto populate. So extend your stay in Canada. And we'll click on here. Extend your stay in Canada. So, about the process, please do well to read all this. Yeah, do well to read all this because I've done this multiple times. So, I just know what I'm looking for. So, I'll just come to um, how to apply. They are all information that are vital to you about the process, who can apply, how to apply after to apply, and you're traveling outside Canada. So um, I'll just scroll down to sign in or create an account. I've done um, a video on this before. I just looked at it and I saw that it is not uh, displaying in full resolution, in full screen. When you're using laptop, you can only use a phone to see it in full. And I was wondering where the glitch came up because uh, it was done on the laptop. So I expected it to have a full screen. And this is why I'm doing a repeat of this. So um, with that video, I created a sign is a GC key. So you can go over it should you want to create a GC key. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to create that. I'm just going to go straight to um, sign in and apply. Yeah. So um, create an account or sign in. So, and the next thing is um, your GC key, username and password. I already have one for the sake of this video. It is already saved. So I'm just going to sign in. Should you not have one, you click here, sign up, answer the security question, put in your security question, answer the questions, and you'll be able to log in. So I'm just going to sign in right now. And welcome back. Um, now a one-time passcode. This is sent to my email. So I'll just quickly go over my email to pick this information. Continue. Terms and condition. You can. Okay, so this is the account I'm going to be using. So this is the account I created. So you scroll down to the uh, that, uh, bottom of the account. So you scroll down and you come to apply to come to Canada and it's giving you a um, personal reference code. I don't have it. And this, I do not have personal reference code. So what option does uh, visit visa, there's study and there's work permit, study permits and work permit. So I click on this and then answer the questions, respond to the questions, find out if you're eligible to apply. What do you like to, uh, what would you like to do in Canada? 
visit because you're still on visit and how long are you planning to stay in Canada and temporarily less than six months because you are not on super visa so it's less than six months and select the code that match the one on your passport so you're from for the sake of this video I'm going to use my home country Nigeria so this is and uh, what is your country and territory of residence if you are pres uh, presently in Canada should you you should select Canada. So because I am extending my stay, so I'm going to select Canada for this. Uh, for those outside Canada, definitely you're not extending your stay. You're just applying to come into Canada. So in this case, uh, I am in Canada. So I'm going to select Canada for this. So this is, I think, what differentiates it from if you're applying for your visa using the in this other portal, because we have two portals, should you be applying for your visa? So uh, what is your current country or territory of residence? If you're presently in Canada, okay, yeah, we've done this. Do you have a family member who is a Canadian citizen or permanent resident who is above 18? So in this case, you can say yes. Yeah, this is technically yes. Most of us have people we've invited down to Canada and we want to extend their stay, so yes. What is your date of birth? For the sake of this video, <laughs> I can't recall what I used. But um, maybe 1960, I guess. Let me just use 90th January 1st, 1960. <laughs> and next. But uh, I, I know this particular application. Should you make a mistake in your date of birth, and towards the end of it, it will tell you the information on this portal and your information did not align. So... And uh, have you lived in Canada as a permanent resident or landed immigrant? Have you lived in Canada? Okay, so have you lived in Canada as a permanent resident or landed immigrant? No, I'm not a permanent resident. I'm not a landed immigrant. And I'll find out, are you a lawful permanent resident of the United States, citizenship, and so on? No. And... What is your current immigration status in Canada? I'm a visitor in Canada. And next, how are you related to your family member? Let me say I'm doing this for my parents. So I'm going to put parents. It can be legally married spouse, committed partner, common law spouse, grandchildren. And if it's others for your friends or cousins or your brothers, no, there's a, uh, a line for brothers. So any other person can go for others. So I'm doing this for my parents. What is your marital status? Uh, let's say I'm married. What province or destination? If you're sitting multiple provinces, uh, I live in Ontario, so I'm just going to use Ontario. Um, next, this is your result. I told you it's a very straightforward process. And you may be eligible to extend your stay in Canada as a visitor slash tourist. So you will continue, and this is the checklist it has created for you for a visitor. Just try and read all this information. Like I said, I've done it multiple times, so I'm not just going to waste time trying to read all this because I don't want this video to be lengthy. And next, uh, are you accompanying a family member who has a status in Canada? No, because I have <laughs> passed this stage. I'm already in Canada. When does your status in Canada expire? You can see this because you're already in Canada. So let me say this is 2024 and the status is going to expire in 2024. It's 2024. Uh, I'm in January. Let me say it's going to expire in March. So I'm trying to apply ahead. Uh, let me say March 1st. So technically I have like Less than two months. And next, have you had a medical examination done? So when you're applying for visit visa, usually you don't, uh, you're not required to have a medical, your medicals done. So for the sake of this, you have to say no because you've not done medicals before. And once your extent, uh, and once your extension has been approved, you're going to be required to undergo a medical. So you say no, you've not done medicals before. And find out if you're eligible to apply 
do you want to work in any of the following jobs? Please say no, you don't want to work. No, <laughs> because a temporary worker, you're not required to work. So no, I do not intend to work. And do you want to submit an application for family member? If you're doing this, so you're going to fill in the representation form. So in this case, just pretend that they are the ones doing it themselves, especially for those, those of us that are doing for our aged period. So just say, no, they are the ones doing it themselves because anyway, they're going to be beside you when you're filling this application. So uh, next, are you giving someone access to your application? No, I'm not giving anybody to my, access to my application. But if an agent is doing this for you, yes, you have to appoint a representation. And in this case, you fill that representation form. So for the sake of this video, the response will be no. And penalty if you are eligible to apply in the past 10 years, have you given fingerprints? Yes, you definitely did give your fingerprints during your visit visa application. Uh, there are fees associated with this. Will you be applying? Uh, will you be paying your fee or are you free exempt or you're going to be paying? So you say, yes, I will be paying my application fee because there's a hundred dollar fee attached to this. Yeah. Are you able to make digital copy of your document with a scanner or camera? Definitely. Yes. I'm going to be sending in my documents. I'm going to be scanning my documents, so to speak. And next, so will you be paying your application fee online? To pay online, you can use your credit card, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and what have you. And yes, you'll be paying online with your card. And now this is for you. You can go over this and review all your question, uh, all the questions asked and your responses. This is summary of it. And there's this gear here where you can edit. You do think that uh, some of the response you've given earlier is wrong and you'd like to correct the response. So you can edit this key here, edit each session of your responses that you've given. And after that, just continue. If you've checked and everything looks perfect to you, then you proceed. Uh, once you proceed, it's stating submit your application. These are the steps. You must log into your account. And step two, you must select your exit button and everything. Just please read through and you have to upload some document as well. And it's giving you information about the document. The maximum file is four megabytes and so on. It has to be in JPEG or doc. Read through it, then you pay your fee. So this is basically the steps and you click and continue. It's still bringing you to checklist of what you need. And this is like the final page where you have to download this application to change condition, extend stay or remain in Canada as a visitor. You have to download this IMM 5708 form. Once you download it, you fill it in and you upload. This is basically like the main information you're going to be providing. And these are supporting document, your, uh, your passport, a scan copy of your passport. This is it. You must submit a legal copy of your valid travel document. This is uh, your international passport anyway. Then proof of fund. Yes, you must also provide proof of fund. So in this case, uh, when I did for my mom, I provided my bank statement. You can provide your bank statement having some certain amount of money in it, or you can also provide um your your employment letter to show that you have the financial capacity to still retain someone in Canada. Uh, I think for me, when I did for my mom, I I provided a bank statement that had five thousand dollars. So. I've done visa for some family member that I just had to present $3,000. So there's no one fit size to how much you should provide. Then your digital copy of your passport, then you provide this. And these are other optional documents as well. Application for temporary resident visa made outside of Canada. This is if you made this outside of Canada. So we didn't make this outside of Canada. So we don't need this and client information i don't need these these are optional and this is the fee you're going to pay hundred dollar uh once you've done this once you've uploaded everything here especially the compulsory one you will just see an interface for you to go next uh, to so uh, to pay and to submit i have a document like this i have filled 
if I upload it, it's, it's not going to submit because the information on that document does not um, correlate with the information on this application portal. It's just going to give me an error form. So this I, it, this has been customized in such a way that any information on that document, as soon as you upload it, it brings out your name, the name of the applicant and everything. So just up, uh, download this. Download this. If you click on this, you can see. And you have to have an Adobe Reader for you to be able to read what is in the document. You can see it's unable. I'm unable to read it because I don't have it on this laptop. But these are all the sessions in the document. You can see application to change your, your personal details, your language, your passport, your national identity information, coming to Canada, details of your visit, education, almost the same thing you filled during your application to, uh, to come to Canada. So for me, I just replicated everything I filled then. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. It should have opened, but it's not opening. So usually I use another system that has Adobe Reader in it. And you're good to go. I think this is basically everything about um, extending your stay in Canada is a very simple process so you can just get it done within 30 minutes oh no let me not use my own speed but let's say one hour two hours you should be done with everything filling the application submitting and yes and after that uh, you're going to get your extension approved so the way it is done is once your extension is approved they will approve your extension and still require uh, you to go for your medicals so you have to go for your medicals and once you're done with the medicals then you send your reports to them via web form uh, before all this medicals is done they will also send you to your postal code they'll post to you your extension certificates that you have been extended to stay in canada yes Basically, that's all. Thank you so much for watching this far. Please hit the uh, like button, subscribe, share to your friends. Thank you. Bye.